stay Excuse tuned me. because for the next Excuse 60 me. minutes, motorsports allow me to interrupt for a moment. Hi, Hi everybody, I'm, Bryant, I'm Katie Borwitz, and this is the 1028th edition of Motorsports Unlimited. It's no secret we are enthusiastic snowmobilers and wait all year for snow to hit the ground so we can hit the trails. Only problem is, for the past 10 years, we haven't had any appreciable snow. Bill says years ago they used to snowmobile on the chain of lakes all winter long. In fact, we've even done programs called snowmobiling on the chain of lakes. We certainly haven't been able to do that for years. The chain doesn't freeze like it used to, and there isn't any snow. As discouraging as that is, it doesn't change the fact that snowmobiling is a very cool sport. Bill's answer to the problem is to make sure he's ready when the snow does come. There is no time to waste. During the last couple of weeks, we showed you how to go snowmobiling in Whitewater, Wisconsin, northwest of Chicago. Today, we're going to show you how to snowmobile along the I&M Canal, southwest of Chicago. Wherever the snow hits, north, south, west, we want you to be ready, because it probably won't last long. Now let's join Tim Murtaugh as he explains, almost 10 years ago, how to snowmobile if That's snow right, hits southwest of Chicago. Has finally arrived with a heavy snowfall, particularly in the southern portion of the Chicagoland area. This provides us with an excellent opportunity to reacquaint you with the Heritage Corridor Snowmobile Trail running from Shanahan to LaSalle, Illinois. Before we get to the snowmobiling part, we want to make sure you know how to get to and use this trail. So let's join Bill and the girls en route to Shanahan, Illinois, the eastern end of the Heritage Corridor Snowmobile Trail. We're on 294 headed south and I'm going to try to talk to you and drive at the same time. I hope we don't have any police watching. And as always, this is Motorsports Unlimited, so of course we've got a lot of pretty girls, but of course you know Dawn right over here and you know Peggy all the time, but we've got a brand new girl on Motorsports Unlimited. And this is Samantha. Matter of fact, Samantha, why don't you tell the folks who you are? I'm Samantha Bentley. Okay, Samantha is brand new to Motorsports Unlimited and she couldn't have a rougher indoctrination because this is the coldest day of the year in Chicago and we're taking her snowmobiling and she's never been snowmobiling, right? Exactly. This is my first time. Okay, so we've got a first time snowmobiler in Samantha and Dawn, this is first time snowmobiling for you. Yes, it is. But not the first time with the program. You're used to this wild stuff. Oh, I love it. All right. Well, <laughs> well what we're doing right now, folks, is we're going south on 294 and we're looking for I-55, the Stevenson Expressway. And as soon as we hit, uh, as soon as we get to I-55, we are going to turn towards St. Louis or going south on I-55 and head towards I-80. So uh, don't go away. We're coming back. Participating in Motorsports Unlimited is like going on a field trip every week. We found the I-55 exit and turned south. We're headed south on I-55 now. Um, what we're going to do, the way to get to this uh, place, uh, it's actually Shanahan, Illinois, and Shanahan is kind of, it's not exactly, but it's kind of at the intersection of I-55 and I-80. And In fact, what you do is you take I-55 south, don't turn on I-80, it's the first exit after I-80 when you're going south on I-55. So we're headed south on I-55 right now on the way to Shanahan and what we're going to do is we're going to look for a place there called Rudolph's. Now we've brought you uh, a couple of programs from Rudolph's before. These are one of those wonderful places that lets you park your car and your trailer there so you can go off and go snowmobiling all day. Doesn't cost anything and it's a, it's a terrific place. So that'll be our base of operations where we start from. Um, what do you think Don? Are you a little nervous about your first snowmobile ride? No, I'm excited and I'm excited driving in the famous motorsport van here. Well, that, that, <laughs> well I'm, I'm glad you're excited about it. The, the van's not all that exciting, is it, Sam? Oh, it's it's hey, just it's, fine. It does a, the job. It's an oldie <laughs> but a goodie, Bill. That's right. It works. That's right. This is a, this is a, a low mileage, little 135,000 mile beauty. Uh, in any event, folks, don't go away because uh, we'll check back in with you once more. I hope these directions are working for you because what I want you to know is that there's all kinds of snowmobiling in the Chicagoland area. As a matter of fact, we're real lucky, as I've said many times on uh, Motorsports Unlimited, to live in the Chicagoland area because we've got great snowmobiling, we've got great boating, we've got wonderful racetracks. Uh, for the motorsport enthusiasts, this is a wonderful area to live. And I want you to know where all of these places are. Shanahan, uh, or what we're going to is actually the, uh, the I&M Canal or the uh, Heritage Corridor Snowmobile Trail. Uh, is to the south and as I've explained before when you're a snowmobiler what you do is you watch the weather if you have snow to the south you go down to the INM canal if you don't have snow to the south you have snow to the north there's a number of places like the chain of lakes like the McHenry trail system like Whitewater Wisconsin and hopefully we're gonna bring you all of those places this year we'll see so don't go away we're coming back being brand new I didn't know what to expect but so far it was fun we were all watching for the Shanahan exit 
We're almost there, folks. Uh, we are now passing I-80. I know you can't see the sign there because it's out in the bright sunlight, uh, but we're passing I-80 and we're going to be continuing on south on I-55 to the first exit past I-80. What do you think, Don? You getting excited? I'm getting excited now, Bill. We're getting closer. Okay, now you've never driven one of these at all, but I gave you a little explanation when we were up at Waz's there about how to ride them, and the first thing you said was, no clutch? No clutch. That means that's just the uh, throttle, the gas, and the brake. That's right. These things are actually, and Peggy, you've heard this all before. Uh, what, do I, what do I always tell folks about riding snowmobiles? They're the easiest thing in the world to work. Because? Well, you, like Dawn said, you've got the throttle, brake, and gas, and you just go and you have fun with it. It's so simple. You just got to be heads up and stay warm. You'll have a good time. Exactly, and I think that actually allows you to be more heads up because of the fact you're not really thinking about shifting it because a lot of people who start are more or less to think about what they're doing. Right. Well, you know? Well, when I first started snowmobiling, too, I was kind of intimidated. I didn't know really? what to expect, but once you got on it, you, you go. You don't want to go slow. You just want to go and have fun. It's real well, simple. And, of course, that's the problem I have with the girls all the time, yeah. Sam. They always want to go too fast. Is that right? Well, Bill, that this is the fastest accelerated vehicle, I mean, you know. She right. picked that up from the show. I'll tell you right now, I've said it many times on Motorsports Unlimited, snowmobiles are arguably the fastest accelerating production vehicles in the world. And, and why do you suppose that is, uh, Sam? You tell me. Because of all the traction they've got, no other vehicle has that big of a piece of traction laying on the ground. That big snowmobile drive uh, track laying on the ground gives tremendous traction. And these things really do accelerate, right, Peg? Right, and we do pick up things from the show. Right? Of course. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, I hope so. I, I hope so too. I see they're paying attention, folks. And by the way, we're coming up here. This uh, this is going to be the first exit, and it looks like it's Route Six. I want to make sure. In fact, see what we're going over right now, girls. This is the Illinois and Michigan Canal. See that little canal out there? Uh -huh. That's and we'll be talking. We'll be talking about that a little bit later here. I want to explain what the INM Canal is a little bit later. But what we're coming up, it says Shanahan, next two exits. And what we're going to get off at is the first one, which is exit 248, and it's Route 6. And we are going to head west on it into Shanahan. So, uh, folks, I think uh, as when we get to, uh, to Rudolph's, uh, we'll, we'll come right back. Of course, you need to know what to do after you head west on Route 6. So let's pick up the explanation there. We're still headed uh, west on Route 6. It's been about two or three miles, and what I'm looking for is a restaurant called the Lone Star Restaurant. Now, I know you can't see out the window, but I see it coming up here on the right-hand side. It's sort of a uh, sort of a barn red uh, kind of a building. It's called the Lone Star Restaurant, and when you see that, you've got to make a left turn at the road that's right across the street from it, and the road is called Center Street. That's Center Street in Shanahan, right across from the, what was it, Lone Star Restaurant? Girls, my, did you notice? It said Lone Star. Yeah, that's what it said. That's okay, what it said. Lone Star Restaurant. Now we take Center Street and you follow Center Street along for, oh, I'd say about oh, maybe a quarter of a mile, maybe a half a mile at the most. And what you're looking for is Ridhoff's on the right. And that's the place where they let you park the cars and trailers and uh, snowmobiles uh, for the whole day so you can all go off on the uh, on the INM uh, Canal or the Heritage Corridor Snowmobile Trail. And we're going to explain all that in a moment. So we're almost there and Peggy is real excited about being almost there. Why, Peg? because we're going to be able to go, go snowmobiling and stop at the restroom. That's, that's it. Uh, <laughs> she, she, means, she means stop at the restroom. I had a feeling you were trying to get that out of me. <laughs> They've been bugging me for about 20 minutes now, guys. Well, girls, relax. We're almost there. It wasn't funny, Bill. We were in the van for an hour. And let's just say we were all glad to see Ridoffs. Rudolph's changed hands years ago and is now called Laloffs, but they're still I've snowmobile said many times friendly. Before that the ideal temperature for snowmobiling is between 10 and 25 degrees. We're about 10 or 15 degrees below that. It was minus four the last temperature that I heard. This is definitely too cold for snowmobiling, but we're going to do it anyhow because we've got a wonderful opportunity. We've had plenty of snow here in the Chicago area, and particularly we've had snow. We've got snow down here on the south side, which we don't always get, and it gives us a chance to take advantage of the Heritage Corridor Snowmobile Trail, uh, which sometimes will go a couple years. We won't be able to ride it, so we want to ride it today, and we want to tell you all about it. I've got all of these folks today here, and if you would chuck pull your shot back and show all the snowmobiles. I called my friend Gary Mativich uh, from Rich's Cycle in Lockport and said, guys, can you help me? <laughs> I need six snowmobiles in Shanahan on Sunday. Gary, you got it done. We got more than six here for you, Bill. You sure did, and please tell the folks who you are. I'm Gary Mativich from Lockport. 
Absolutely, and if you know, this is our favorite toy mechanic. He's the guy that does all the work on our boats, and, and as a matter of fact, you also do the personal watercraft, and we've got a show set up for next year already, right? That's a show I want to be at. Well, yes, you. and this one you're going to stay all day today too, right? Uh, <coughs> all day. <laughs> I'll be here for a while. <laughs> okay, Peggy. It's this year, not next year. Yeah. You're right, it's 1997. <laughs> You're exactly correct. In any event, I want to introduce you first to all these terrific folks that have made their sleds available for us and given us an opportunity to show you some of the real joy and pleasure of snowmobiling. I've said it before on Motorsports Unlimited, you live in the Chicagoland area, you don't have a snowmobile, you are cheating yourself. This is a wonderful time of the year. We actually look forward to it, believe it or not. Let me start it all the way down at this end and please tell the folks again who you are. Mike Venziano from Shanahan. Well, you're right from Shanahan. Right here, yeah, five minutes down the road. So you get to take advantage of this trail all the time. Yeah, I didn't even have the trailer here. I just drove right down the side of the road to here. Oh, that's very cool. Don't run away. And I want you once again, now that the audience gets a chance to see you, Sam, please tell the folks again who you are. Well, they met you in the van, but let's do it this way. Samantha Bentley from Chicago. Okay, this is a terrible way to start Motorsports Unlimited. It's four below zero. It's cold. It's freezing cold, but you'll see. You're going to have fun. This is going to be great. And you are. I'm Kurt Boggs from Ridoff's Restaurant. That's right, and I want to explain, we've been explaining this way down, the one of the things you have to do with snowmobiling, the hardest part about it is, is that you're gonna have a snowmobile trailer, and you're gonna have all your gear, and you've gotta park your car and trailer somewhere. There are these wonderful places that like to encourage and promote snowmobiling that make their parking lots available. Chuck, pull the camera shot back full wide, show the parking lot here. After you show it here, pan over to the left because they've also got a vacant lot across the street and they let you park your cars and trailers over there also. Just keep going all the way over to the other side, Chuck. They let you park down there also. Doesn't cost anything. This is a wonderful thing that they do. And we're going to come back because I understand you're also the president of the club or something? I'm trail boss for the snowmobile club here in town. Trail boss. Now that sounds serious. We're going to come back to this guy and find out a little bit more about the do's and don'ts on the trails. Peggy, everybody knows you, of course. You're looking forward to this because I know you like the snowmobile. Right. I just wanted to add, I'm sure if I had a snowmobile, I think I would be hesitant as to where to go. Where can you park your, your vehicle, where you can go? And I think facilities like this is just excellent to have. That's why we want to tell people about it. That's why I went through such detail on the way down here to make sure people knew how to get here because this is a place where you can legally, because what you don't want to have happen is don't take a chance. Don't just think anybody will let you park there. Always go in and ask. Don't just park in some restaurant parking lot because you might come back and everything will be towed away when you get back eight or nine hours later. It's a real nice thing these people do. And by the way, make sure you do this in a courteous fashion. Don't take up where their customers would normally park. Try to park further away from the place in the back part of it and use the space efficiently. Don't crisscross and everything. Yep. They also have a restroom. <laughs> oh, Peggy, I know. Oh Gary, we met you. Don, first time on Snowballs? I know I'm you're looking forward time. to it. I'm so excited. This okay. is my first time. Are you good? <laughs> Are you good yeah. and cold yet? I'm, I'm getting there, but I'm not too bad. It's actually, it's a little sunny. I don't know if it's helping, but I don't know. We'll, I hope so. I'm getting numb. Maybe that's it. We'll be okay. <laughs> and you are? Forrest Fawcett from Shorewood. Uh, Shorewood, that's pretty close down here. Real close. Five minutes. And what kind of sled did you bring? I brought the Yamaha. It's his, though. Uh, okay, well, that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. And you are? Uh, Jamie Darpa, Shorewood. Uh, also from Shorewood, and you brought? Yes, I brought my VMAX DX and the Venture XL. So you got two of them down here? Yep. One's a luxury sled, and what we've got to do, folks, is we're going to try something brand new today. We're using a little small Handicam. I am always disappointed with what I do with the snowmobile programs because snowmobiling is so cool, and it seems to me we, like we never capture it because our equipment is so uh, uh, bulky and, and, and complicated. We're going to try a little simple camera. We're going to have Chuck Hitzenthaler in the back of one of these sleds. We'll probably use a luxury ride like this. We'll have him on the back of the sled. Uh, I hope with a small camera that we're going to get you some real snowmobile action. Yes. Chuck gets extra credit today because he hurt his back. So. And on top of that, he's working with an ailing back. Now, let me move on down, and you are? Jared Miglarini from, from Lockport. Okay, and what did you bring? Two VMAXs, a red, this red one here, and this blue one back here. Uh, twins or fours? Twins. Both 600 cent? Correct. Okay, this is latest state of, when they say VMAX folk, we're talking about latest state of the art Yamaha sleds. And of course, the king of them all is the big VMAX 4, and they've got a couple of those, and I'm gonna make sure I get on one of those, and you are? Aaron Mudrock from Lockport. And what did you bring? Uh, 92 VMAX 4 and a 95 uh, VMAX 600. So you've got one of each of the VMAXs. You've got the, the big guy and the little guy. Oh, yeah. Which one do you like better? Uh, I like the VMAX 4. Yeah, that's the one I would like too, I think, because I'm telling you folks, they don't have enough cylinders on anything for me. And you are? Matt Gambozzi from Lockport. And what did you bring? Uh, 700 SX. Okay, this is brand new. Chuck, take a shot over here. This is brand new for 1997. This is a big radical change for Yamaha in that they've always had the uh, kind of strut uh, front suspensions, and this is an independent front suspension patterned after, I guess we could say, more traditional snowmobile approach because they wanted longer travel, and uh, in order to have longer travel, they would have to have struts so high that it would be unsightly. What do you think so far? Yeah, it's been a great sled. Okay, it's also lighter, I should say. It's a triple, 700 triple yes. rather than an 800 four-cylinder. Yes. And you like it? Yeah, very much. Can you run with the force? 
Easily. Really? Easily. Wait a minute, who had the force? You had the force? What do you think? Can he run with you? We'll find out. Ah, there we go. That's my kind of guy. We'll find out. Let me come down here. And you are? Mark Gotts from Lockport. And what did you bring? I brought the 93 750 VMAX 4. Another guy with a 4? Yes. Okay, baddest right around? Yes. Close to it, if he, not the... You can't keep up. Okay, we're going to find out today, folks. And you are? Uh, Kevin Wilder from Wilmington. And what did you bring? Uh, Yamaha SRV. Uh, what's an SRV? It's uh, one of the classics. It's it's like a seven, it's an 89. So, well, I got news for you. An 89 is newer than any sled that I've got. So in fact, by quite a few years. So that's I wouldn't call it classic yet. That's still pretty new for me. Uh, yeah, all the Yamaha sleds are good sleds though. You like the Yamaha? Yes, I do. Okay, folks. I think you can see that we've got Yamaha fans here, and uh, so I guess we've got all Yamahas today. They've already been on me about my Polaris snowsuit, but uh, there's nothing I can do about it. this. Is the snowsuit that I've got, folks. In any event, back to the Trail Boss. I like the name Trail Boss. First thing right off the bat, give us the do's and don'ts. And Chuck, I want you to show the audience. The reason you park here, you can park your cars and trailers here, as we've pointed out before. Chuck, shoot all the way down the road. And what I'm looking for is that bridge. The car is going to be going over it in a second. There's another one coming the other way. And nod your head if you can see that down there. Okay, we need to pull everybody this way just a little bit. Okay, we got it. Okay, that is where the trail begins down there. And as I remember coming down to uh, to uh, run the Heritage Corridor Snowmobile Trail, uh, is that you park here and you they, they kind of wink their eye. They let you run down the side of the road to get down to the trail and turn left uh, by that bridge and get started. But I understand they've got another trail now. Yeah, well, they uh, about three years ago, they put in a bridge over the dam in the state park, which takes the trail. But, of course, with the floods this past spring, we lost the bridge. So we're back to using our old route there. We have to go down Bridge Street to get on the Heritage Trail. Uh, and it is legal to do that. And you're right, we do look the other way. Law and snowmobilers are being courteous. Go slow and stay off the side of the road. Let me emphasize it again. Let me make my speech. All of this works only so long as we behave ourselves and behave in a courteous fashion. When you run down the road, remember, this is a privilege. Stay close to the edge. Go slow. Get off, just be on it only as long as you have to be, and get off onto the trails and stay on the trails. That is correct. Stay on the trail. There, are, Watch your signs. Pay attention to them. There are some gates on the trail where road crossings come in. You have to be careful. There is ample warning before you get to the gate, but just be careful when you're down there. Okay, any other do's and don'ts? Well, that's you know, that's basically it. You will be going through some towns like Morris, Seneca, Marseilles. There are marked routes through those towns. Not all towns like Shanahan are open to snowmobiling. So when you get into those towns, make sure you do follow the signs, stay on the trail, and keep that privilege of riding for all of us. With It's up to us to protect it. That's right. We're the only ones that can do it, and we're the only ones that can blow it. So. Absolutely. Now, let me explain that real quickly. The way the Heritage Quarter, and, and I was explaining this to you a little bit yesterday, the way the Heritage Quarter Snowmobile Trail works is what this is, is the i &M Canal, which was dug by immigrant workers back in the early 1800s, which offered a navigable waterway all the way from Lake Michigan to LaSalle. It was 96 miles long. Now, the first 30 miles of it from Lake Michigan down to Shanahan is kind of gone with the sanitary and ship canal. But the rest of the 61 miles that goes from Shanahan out to LaSalle is still here. The interesting thing from our perspective is while they don't use the canal anymore, the the way they moved these barges was with mules and mules pulling long ropes pulling the barges and the mule path is what we use and in the summer the mule path is now used for bicyclists and hikers and in the winter it's for snowmobilers and the way this works is there's a town like every eight or nine miles something like that. I think Morris is 12 miles from here but some of them are closer 12, approximately 12 miles right that's correct and these towns were originated because they needed places to water the mules and change mules and all that right that's correct Okay, so as we go along this trail, we'll be going through, and I don't know how far we'll get today, but we'll be going through, you know, a long trail section, then get to a town. Most of the towns will allow you to park your snowmobiles there so you can go and get something to eat and warm up and get fuel and all that sort of thing. But again, make sure that you can. That's right, and let's say just follow the rules and enjoy yourself. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, the first order of business is we've got to get you a snowmobile lesson, right? Exactly, because this is my first time. Okay, you're gonna. this is going to be fun. You're going to see, and Don, we've got to get you a snowmobile lesson. Yes, you do. And Peggy, you're going to help with the lessons because you don't need any lessons, do you? Can't I just go and ride while you're working with them? <laughs> no, you're going to help me on this thing. Okay, just step forward here like this because I want to make sure we get uh, Sam off to a good start. Sam, come right up here next to Peggy. Don, come right up here, the three of you guys together. Now, what I'm going to do is when I say together, all you guys are going to say, don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Despite the cold, Dawn and Sam were looking forward to learning how to ride, so we moved our equipment to the start of the trail and began the lesson. It is 
cold, but I know the girls are really looking forward to this today. And poor Samantha, her first show with Motorsports Unlimited, it's below zero. Do you know that? Oh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> okay, but are you excited to learn this? Oh, you betcha. Okay, betcha. we've got Peggy here. She thinks she's going to sit there. She's not going to sit there. Peggy, come back here with me because you know how to do this, and I'm going to have you do the exp help us do the explaining to the other girls. Come on over here with Gary and I. Gary, you got some gorgeous sleds lined up, and right away, obviously, right over here, Peggy. Right away, when I spot a four-cylinder VMAX Yamaha with pipes and chrome skis, I say that's the one I'm going to ride, right? Right, Bill. We knew what would uh, get you all excited, so we made sure we brought that kind of equipment for you. Absolutely. They don't have enough cylinders for me. And when you got four cylinders, I want to ride the four cylinders. Okay, real quick, Gary, you're the expert. You're our toy mechanic. You're the expert. Do's and don'ts real quick. What two cents worth you want to throw in so the girls can hear you? Well, the most important thing to realize is to be cautious and look at the terrain you're driving over. That's real, real, you know, important. And just look ahead first. That's all. We're going to go over the, the operation, uh, the controls. They're very, very simple. You just have a gas and a brake. It's very simple. Anybody can ride a snowmobile, but there's something else I want to point out, too. I want you to take a look at these guys. And first of all, once again, tell the folks who you are. Mark Outs from Lockport. Okay, Mark, take a look what Mark is wearing. This is absolutely, this is not just for style. Obviously, these are beautiful clothes. But when you do snowmobiling, you cannot enjoy snowmobiling if you're cold. Dressing is very important, and it's also a safety problem. Yes, it is. It gets real cold out here, especially if you go up north. It gets a couple of degrees below zero, and you don't want to get any, any skin exposed to that, you know especially when you're going 100 miles an hour. So the right gear, everybody agree, the right gear is the first step on enjoying snowmobiling? Guaranteed. Guaranteed, so don't kid around on this stuff. If you're gonna enjoy snowmobiling, making sure you've got the full snow suits, and we've been through this before on Motorsports Unlimited, and also the full face helmets. Correct. Okay, so you agree? Definitely, 100%. Okay, everybody's in agreement that first things first, make sure that you're dressed properly, yes, Don? And Bill, that means a hat for you. Well, I've got my helmet. Okay. It's going on in a minute. Okay. I've got the helmet's going on in a minute. Now, what I want to do is, Peggy, come on out here, kid, because you're the expert on snowmobiles, and I want you to explain, using the sled that you're going to ride, I want you to explain to the girls. They're kind of all listening right now. Okay. Tell them where the controls are and what they do. Well, first you have to turn it on. Now, well, I'm not sure if you before, have... Before we start it, I want them to know where the controls are. How do you ride these things? Um, well, you have to be careful, and this is the, the throttle. Uh, wait a minute. That's the brake. This is the throttle. And what else is there? I don't know. What do you? Steric, that's it. Oh, that's it. I didn't know if you wanted me to explain more, but some you have to pull start and some you could just turn. Electric stuff. No, I don't Electric. even want to get into that okay. point. Pick up your helmet. I want you to sit in it. I want you to show the girls all there is to riding a snowmobile. And I, when I say there's nothing to it, I mean there's nothing to it. Anybody can ride a snowmobile. Show the folks. You want me to go? No, I don't want you to go. I just want you to show them the controls and how they're laid out and what oh, you do. Okay, well, this is the throttle. Here's She's the doing right. the left, her thumb over here on the right side. It's her thumb on the right side. Start it. Get ready to go unless you have to pull it and then you just you just move your thumb you push down on it and here's your brake when you want to stop it's really really simple and steer and steer exactly that's all there is to it dawn yeah. any questions i'm cold <laughs> <laughs> but are there any questions no it, sound, it sounds easy though it's real easy let me come over here and check with yeah. samantha yes it should be nothing for her miss harley rider over there that's right she rides motorcycles so there should be nothing samantha any questions no easy as one two three okay why don't you sit on the machine i want you to make sure you're familiar with the controls go ahead and operate the thumb throttle just put your hand on it operate it and the brake that's it that's all you have to know how to do now one other thing real quick here uh i got peggy's helmet Peggy, here's your helmet. One other thing real quick here, folks. All snowmobiles have kill devices. This is an emergency stop. You do that, engine kills. They've all got emergency kill devices. Most of them now have tethers too, am I correct? No, they used to. Now they did, did away with the tethers. Okay, tethers are gone. You're correct. Well, yes. Are those the things that, the, that are attached to you? Yeah, they require the racers to wear that for like for snowmobile drag racing and all the rest of them so that if the guy gets flipped off the sled, the sled that kills the engine right away. Now, if we're all ready, I want you guys to go ahead and put your helmets on and we're going to get you going here. If you guys would, please start the sleds for the girls. Now, I was nervous, but everyone was very helpful and it didn't seem very complicated. Okay, we're getting good instruction here. I can see I don't have to add anything. Go right ahead and explain it to her. Turn them down. Oh, cool. Okay. These now, have like um, warmers on the Yeah, grip. these have I hand warmers. So cool. Okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to pull forward about a foot and let go of the oh, throttle. Right here. Okay. Just go ahead and give it a little gas about a foot and then let go of it right away. Does it go? Go ahead. And let go. Now one more time and use the brake this time. Now the brake. Now do it again. 
And the brake. Okay, now stay right there. Let me get over here and let's see how Samantha is making out. Samantha, I want you to give it a little gas and go about a foot and then stop. Okay. And stop. Now one more time. Okay, now I want you to go real easy and I want you to make a nice circle, go right out around here and come back here, okay? okay. Go easy though, okay? Don, I want you to follow her and make a nice circle, but I want you to go easy, okay? okay. What do you think, Peggy? How are they doing? Oh, they're doing great. They're I think they're getting their confidence build up. They're getting a little confidence build up here. Okay, she's Why making. Are you done right? Yeah, you got a little. You got. I'll help you in a minute. Any questions? No, I think it's going to be okay. Okay, hold on a minute. Don't go anywhere. Don, any questions? No, it's, it's fun. Okay, what I want you to do is I want you to make a bigger circle to go down and follow the tracks around those trees and then come right back down here, okay? Bigger circle, follow around those trees and come back here, all right? I think they're getting confidence. Peggy, if you want to go ahead and go with him, go ahead. easy and you're going to find out it's fun and in a little bit you're going to find out just how fast these things are. Well you're going to really feel that in a few minutes. Oh great, I can't wait. Okay. okay, just hold on. Got the other girls coming back here now? And I understand we're running out of tape. We've got to hurry this thing up so just uh, as they pull up here. Sam, any questions? No, I think I got it. It's easy? It's very easy. All right, folks, the girls have got it, so we're going to try a little trail riding now with them. Just a minute, Bill. Before we hit the trail, let's take a moment for the girls to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Dawn Caberlin. I'm Samantha Bentley. And I'm Peggy O'Donnell. Thank you, girls. I think I'm ready. I know Dawn is anxious, and expert rider Peggy is mic to describe the action. So let's start the trail ride. We're off. We're on our way. It's a real cold day today. We've got uh, everything on, staying warm as can be. I feel like a little red caboose. <laughs> this is great. And Samantha in front of me is getting a little more confident. She was a little scared at first. Getting more and more comfortable with it. Getting the feel of the uh, trail, the speed and what you need to be, paying attention to what you're doing. We've got Chuck behind me. Yep, you guessed it. Randy and Chuck tipped over. Now we had to hurry to catch up. Watch as Bill, unaware of what happened, comes back to scold me for not keeping up. Coming on ahead of us. Don't do it here, guys. <laughs> we got to catch up to Bill and the girls. The little red caboose is detached from the train. <laughs> In case it isn't clear, Peggy has the wireless mic and has been doing the talking. Randy Block is driving the sled behind her with Chuck as a passenger doing the camera work. Bill is leading on the first sled. Okay. Try to stay closer. They fell over. I couldn't go. Who fell over? Chuck and Randy. <laughs>
with the train put back together, we were on our way again. Okay, we're off again. I'm trailing behind. I'm going to stay a little bit, um, quite a bit of distance from Samantha up in front of me because she's learning. But as I was saying earlier, she's getting more and more confident in riding. She was real hesitant. Dawn seemed to have picked it up like, like she's been doing it forever. Real comfortable with it. The scenery is real pretty with all the snow. But uh, this time of year, we haven't had a whole big um, spell of cold, so I wouldn't trust the, the river or the canal near us. I saw quite a bit of ice earlier before we started on the trail. Here we're coming up to a, uh, a stop ahead sign. So Chuck, can you get up here? Maybe you can pan the little baby sign. I think it's so cute. Right here, this one here. Get the stop. That was a stop yield. Yield ahead. We're going to go up the hill. This is the fun part. I no sooner got done telling you we weren't going to ride on the canal. And Bill drops down onto the ice. I think it's about 30 degrees below zero, wind chill. It's pretty brisk today. I think Bill's got it right. It's a lot more comfortable when it's about, oh, 10 to 25, maybe. Somewhere around in that area when it's that warm. You don't really think about the cold as much as you do right now on a day like today. But it's still beautiful. We're out having a good time. Riding on the canal is fun, but Bill's stopping. Let's see what's going on. Tell the people that we're starting to see signs of open water, so we're going to turn around and go back up on the mule path rather than ride on the canal. Okay. Open water? Open water? Bill is crazy. Get back on the mule path. Well, we're starting to see signs of open water, so we're going to be heads up and turn around and go on the mule path instead of uh, on here. We're going to go on the trail. Because of our show, Motorsports 
Even though we had to backtrack quite a ways, you never take chances with open water. Enough said. Now, let's get back up on the mule path. Now we're back on the mule path. It's really, really icy up here, and Samantha's slowing down quite a bit. I have to slow down my speed. She, it is, it's, it's really heads up to be slow on this path because it's really icy. You really can't see it, but boy, these um, tracks feel it. And it just takes it. Just see? Samantha's having trouble right now. It's real icy right here. Okay. Let me turn. Straighten up a little bit. It's kind of scary when you really, you think you have control, and all of a sudden, it just takes it on you, and then you're, you lose the control. You have to go slow on this. In my experience. Boy, it's beautiful. It's fun. I'm glad we have the sun today. It makes you feel a little bit warmer. <laughs> I don't think it's really helping. You know, I was speaking with my brother yesterday and he was really jealous that I was coming out snowmobiling. You gotta try it just to experience the kind of fun that there that, that you can have on the snowmobile. I'm real happy to be doing the motorsport show with Bill. It's, like a field trip every week. We get to do something new and different and I enjoy doing the things we get to do. Snowmobiling, doing the air shows, doing the car shows, the racing. It's a lot of fun. There's always so much to do. A lot of nice people involved in motorsports. was paved for the first mile or so, but now that we're on the real thing, I was definitely getting the hang of it. All right, now we're off again. The vehicle, the snowmobile that I have in particular is a 600 VMAX Yamaha. It's really, really, it's nice. It's got uh, thumb, what is it called, grip warmers. My thumbs are a little cold. I'm getting a little bit of frost inside the helmet. And I do, I really feel like the little red caboose. <laughs> it's kind of ironic that I got in the snowmobile to match my outfit, but there, it's a really nice ride. It goes really uh, real fast, but we can't get up to that because uh, we're being very careful today. But overall, I'm pretty warm. I've got a little bit of cold around my neck. Just a little bit. We found out later that the Chicago area set a new temperature record on this day. It never got above two. That was the high all day. Now, let's talk about speed on the trail. Now we're only doing about 15 miles an hour. And I think 10 miles an hour is the speed you'd have to go when you're going through uh, private, near private properties. You have to go real slow. You know, they are loud and they will disturb quite a bit of people, you know, especially at night. There are a lot of us snowmobilers who do like to ride the trails at night. Now, we've only ridden a few times when it got dark, and it was a lot of fun. It was a little scary because you can't see as well. You, you don't have the vision like you do in the daytime. Next, Bill stopped and gave me the wireless mic and told me to say whatever I thought. So here goes. All right, folks, we're on our way. We've got the uh, Illinois River on our uh, left side, and then we've got the canal on our right. And it's really, really cold out here. Bill's leading the pack right now, just kind of like following along. that's 
never been uh, snow mobiling. This is actually not a bad sport to learn. At first I was really a little bit afraid, but as you get into it, it's really easy to get into. the cameraman who's filming us right now, he, but he's got the worst deal because he doesn't get to wear any helmets. Turned out to be a really nice afternoon, even though it's really cold. doing great for her first time. Now, Bill brought us to a stop to talk about something he spotted. We just had to stop on the trail here. We're along the Illinois River, and Chuck, if you can, come on over here a little bit, Chuck. Come over past us just a little bit. I want you to show the audience the marina on the other side. We've shown them this many times on Motorsports Limited when we've done this with boats. And Chuck, while you're showing them that, I want you to pan right a little bit. I want them to see the eerie smoke, the cold condensation rising up off of the Illinois River right now, and then pass back over to the, uh, to the marina over there. Peggy, we've been by that many times on a boat. Oh yes, I know, it's amazing how the steam's coming off the water and everything, and it's not frozen at all. It seems to me the last time here you were in that silver one-piece bathing suit that was such a hit. Oh, you remember? Yeah, that was a nice one. <laughs> and you were in the very, very scanty white, one. no, white bikini. Was it the white one or the pink one and the white bikini, I think? I think this one was the white bikini when we went by oh, here. Yeah. Okay, I remember now. Now, does all this talk of bikinis and uh, one-piece bathing suits make you a little bit cold right now, Samantha? Uh, chilly, very chilly. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You wouldn't believe this thing in the summer. This is such a wonderful recreational area down here, both for boating and for snowmobiling. Yes, Peggy? We've done shows in over 100 degrees. So on the other hand, it's, you know, the flip coin. We can the other sometimes, you know, one extreme or the other. One extreme, yeah. one extreme to the other. And this is the, this is, I love snowmobiling and this is the snowmobiling part of the extreme but I want the audience to be reminded again Chuck if you would take a shot out there of the river I want them to see all that steam rising off the river it is right now I believe below zero so it was four below when we started I think it's about one or two below right now I it is know. very very cold yeah but wind chill it's like though minus 30 yeah minus 30 below wind chill fever or wind chill and which is really a little too cold for snowmobiling snowmobiling is ideal between 10 and 25 anything warmer than 25 is really too warm for the gear and all that and any when it gets below 10, it gets hard to kind of keep your feet warm. I do want to point out, though, that a lot of the hardcore snowmobilers have suits that plug into the snowmobiles. They're electric suits to keep them warm. They have electric thumb warmers and all the rest of it. But we're doing okay so far, huh? Oh, I think so. Okay. I'm, I'm Dawn, is it, is it kind of your turn to talk now? Well, I would love to. I mean, it's, it's great scenery and everything, and you know, I'm just taking it all in. Okay, so what we've got here is the Illinois River on our left side, and on our right side is the I&M Canal, and we're going to keep going for a while, folks. Just as we were about to get started, we spotted someone we saw earlier leaving for his trail ride. We want to talk just for a moment about the camaraderie on the trails. As you can see, we've got a guy that's got a broken belt, a matter of fact, a badly broken belt. Come on over here, Chuck. I want you to meet all these folks. First of all, you are? Randy Gunderson. From? Manuka. And? Yeah, Bob Burnett from Joliet. And? Brad Gunderson from Manuka. And? Dennis Blanding from Montgomery. Now we met this guy about an hour or so ago on the trails. He said some real nice thing about our programs. You watch Motorsports Unlimited all the time apparently. Yes, all the time. I watched you guys last year when you ran the ATVs down here and that's how I found this trail. So you found the trail through our show? Yes, sir. Well, there's exactly what we're trying to accomplish. There are so many wonderful resources in the Chicagoland area that are free, don't cost you a dime. All you have to do is know where they are and how to get there. And what do you think of it, by the way? I think it's great. Um, I broke down. I forgot to put an extra belt in, which I suggest everybody should bring. And these guys are going to take me all the way back into town and get me a belt. That's the point I wanted to make. Camaraderie, people that are involved in snowmobiling, like motorcycling and like boating, kind of know we're all in this together. And anybody can break down at any time, so we all help each other, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. It happens all the time. Right. And, that, and nobody minds doing it? Nope. 
well, I want to tell you, I want to thank you guys on camera. This is it's a nice gesture, but I know that anybody would do it for you too. This is just part of snowmobiling. I bet you didn't know that about snowmobiling. Guys will help each other. He's dragging him back about 10 miles to uh, because he's got a broken belt. Pretty nice, huh? That sure is. It really is. And I want to thank you for the kind words about our program. And again, folks, that's what we're trying to accomplish. We want to talk about a winter wonderland. Pan your shot around here, Chuck. Take a look. Girls, look at the scenery for a moment. I know you're all tense here about learning how to ride snowmobiles, but is it pretty down here or what? It's gorgeous, Bill. It's just gorgeous. It's just hard to believe that we were here on your boat in the summertime. It looks it looks beautiful, but it's different. You it's know, totally it's different. It's like a winter wonderland, isn't it? It looks like God's country. Doesn't it? It's gorgeous, Peg. Love it. Yeah, I know you do. This, this is our <laughs> snowmobile here. Anyhow, folks, we're going to, again, now for sure, we're going to go back on the trail. This time, it was Dawn's turn with the mic. All right, here we begin again. It's my turn now. Peggy has said everything she had to say. And again, I'm on the blue sled here, which you folks probably can't tell that I'm on the blue sled. But anyway, I thought it was kind of neat because we kind of match. Blue suit, blue snowmobile. It's just really a shame that today it is so cold. I mean, it is freezing. I mean, I had actually, I'm wearing a helmet, but no problem. I got enough attire, I got a scarf on. I got like a turtleneck, I got a couple shirts, got about three pairs of socks, including wool. I mean, I thought wool, wow, wool keep you warm. But anyway, actually the air was coming underneath the helmet here and my chin was freezing. So actually like, I am like totally covered up right now. And my helmet here is like fogging up, but it's okay. I'm having a great time. Again, folks, for you that have not uh, ever tried this before, you have to get out here and do this. And I don't, you know, it's really cool about these trails here is that it seems like they keep going on and on and on and on. And it's like, I wonder how far they go. But it's like being in a forest, you know, which we are. You see, I see Bill here, he's, uh, I don't know if he's telling me to stop or what, but, oh, I guess he just wanted me to go on the other side. No, he wants us to turn around. Okay, so we're gonna try to turn around here. Actually, I can't even see, but I'm behind Bill, okay. I want you to come to the side of him, so let's do it. Bill felt that as cold as it was, we had gone far enough, and it was time to turn around and go back. We just had to stop again. The scenery along here is absolutely magnificent. Chuck, if you would, take a position up here. I want them to see this picturesque little, uh, looks like I don't... A, looks like the scene from that fog, the movie, uh, horror film a long time ago. <laughs> Well, I, I never really saw that, but you know, when you see these little little structures like this little building, and again, I've seen this all in the summertime, and it is absolutely wild seeing it here in a brutal cold. The last time it was people with bathing suits and all the rest of it, and now, I mean, you got to admit that really looks cold out there. You bet. And yeah. look at us now, we're wrapped up like mummies. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, are you cold though? No, but actually, I'm better now. As I mentioned, I had to put my scarf up to here because my chin was just cold, but that's about it. Only my chin. Okay, what's cold on you? Oh, everything. Oh, She's on. everything. She, you're cold out everywhere? Everywhere. <laughs> okay, we're going to work on her. We're going to get her something, uh, maybe a different snowsuit to work. Peggy, are you cold? You don't look cold. No. Right here, just a little bit. When you look up a little, my thumbs are just a little bit cold, and my toes are just a little cold, but overall, I'm okay. Considering I'm it's right. below zero, not and bad. And considering we've been out here for a while now. We've been out here really quite a while, and yeah. again, I, I just wanted the audience to see this again. Chuck, Pan it one more time, and by the way, we've got the frozen block over here is actually and Randy no, and block. He can't hear a word we say. <laughs> and he can't hear a word we're saying. Randy is operating the chase sled, and Chuck and I'm going to just Chuck bring you shot over here again. We're trying a new way of shooting here today using this little tiny uh, Hi8 camera, and Chuck has been perched on this thing, goes both going forward and shooting backwards. And poor Randy can't hear a thing, so Chuck's hollering him. To, <laughs> how you guys doing? <laughs> uh, I think I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. I don't know until I get all this stuff in editing, uh, but we're having fun here today, anyhow. And as a matter of fact, talk about picturesque. Swing all the way around, Chuck, and show the little picturesque bridge. I don't know if that'll be visible on our camera shot. Picturesque bridge going across the canal over there. This is, it's really pretty cool. And yes, I'm sorry. You know what we're missing? A picnic basket. <laughs> what we need is a picnic basket. And we've got a fellow over here, Chuck, follow along with me. We've got a fellow over here. I wanna make sure you give him some credit. He's been following us along here all day, making sure we don't get ourselves in trouble down here. And once again, tell the folks who you are. Uh, Kevin Wilder. And we've been doing all right? 
Uh, real good, real good. Okay, and I hope we are encouraging people to come and take advantage of this wonderful resource. Again, if you don't have a snowmobile in Chicago, and by the way, you're one of the guys out of Rich's shop, right? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, all the, I can't tell you how much we appreciate the folks at Rich's Cycle Shop. This is actually apparently more than a cycle shop. You guys are like a family. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, a, it's a tight group. A t boy, you're not kidding, and they've been just wonderful as to bringing all these sleds down here and making all this possible. Again, beautiful, and we've been doing okay, although I wanted to go down. You've been running on the canal the whole time, but I'm a little afraid I see the open water. Uh, yeah, it's it's not something you really want to do if you're not really experienced. Uh, if you keep going, you're, you're okay, though. Just right. try not to stop. Right. Well, with the girls, I want to make sure that we don't put them in a position like that. Uh, girls, what do you think? Time to work our way back? Huh? Because because this is, what do you think? Well, like I said, it was a little warmer. Like you said, it would be a little better. You know, but I mean. Ten I, more degrees, and exactly. I'll tell you, you're you're perspiring in the suits. But we're it's amazing. troopers, and, uh, you know, we are, we're having we're fun based on the situation. We're hanging in here. We're hanging Okay, here. everybody together, tell the folks. Don't, Don't go, go away, away folks. folks. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back. Dawn still had the mic, and she took over. Yeah, what's kind of neat looking at this is that it's got the, it kind of looks like a car, actually. But, Car dash, I don't know. Look, this is my first time, and um, I'm having a blast. And I think that, you know, anybody, anybody who has a curiosity, just get out here and do it. It's just, you're, miss, you're cheating yourself, and uh, there's just so many different places that you can go. I mean, if you watch the show here with Bill, he always could give you a lead as far as, you know, places to go. I mean, he, like today, we've given you directions, and I hope it really helps some people. And even the, the, the gentleman we, that we just interviewed, he, he said that it was because of our ATV riding that he actually found out. And, you know, I think that we, we in some way, try to help the public as far as, um, you know, awareness and everything. So it's really nice, you know, and I'd like to be a part of this because it uh, really makes me feel good. And it makes me feel like I'm actually doing something positive because I'm doing things that I actually had a curiosity about. But I'm doing it, you know? I'm out here. And I think it's really great. So I hope to be doing this the next, however long Bill has this show, I hope to be a part of it. But uh, I don't know where we're going now. Just looking on the side, I mean, it, you know, I just hate to keep emphasizing the scenery, but you know what? I just can't help it. This is just so cool. It was a wonderful ride despite the cold, but our camera was freezing up and we felt it was time to wrap things up. Watch, I've got a little surprise for Bill. Well, I think we've got a new convert for a winter wonder. Oh, Peggy! I, don't, I know that was Peggy. Yes, okay. We've got a new convert here. For the, we've got a city girl, right? First time you've ever experienced anything First like this? time, and uh, this is quite a difference from being in the city. I, the people that live in the city, they're missing out on a lot. Isn't it gorgeous? I mean, look down there at that little bridge. Chuck, take your camera shot down that way and show the bridge. Is this picturesque or what? This is what storybooks are made out of. You're exactly right. This is so pretty. And Chuck, again, swing your shot. That's great. And I want you to swing your shot over the other way. I know we're shooting into the sun, but I really want the audience to get a sense of this thing. We went on about two or three miles of this trail. This trail is 61 miles long. I was going to ask you, because based on the sign there, it says McKinley Woods, 2.8 miles, Dresden Access, Access or whatever, 5.8. Dresden, that's the nuclear power plant. Oh, okay. So does this go through all the way to 14.8 miles? No, this goes 61 more. miles out to LaSalle. That, that's, so this... Yeah, but that's just those woods and that, those forest preserves they're pointing out. Oh, okay. I didn't know. <laughs> this is, this again, the Chicago. People in the Chicago area really ought to know about this entire thing down here. They call it the Heritage Corridor. There's a lot of state parks in here, including Starved Rock, and, and I can't name them all off. I'm not an expert here. For the motorsport community, boating, snowmobiling, just an absolutely wonderful. I know it was really cold today, and I, what a tough time to have a brand new girl come on to Motorsports Unlimited. You'd be so, it's going to get better. You'll see. We promise. Okay. Uh, in any event, folks, we've had a great time here today. And once again, Chuck, I want you to broaden your shot. They're going to all run like thieves. Pan around a little bit over here to your right. The guys from Rich's Cycle made all of this possible. We really, really appreciate all the efforts of bringing down the sleds. And we got a guy, Mac, I think his name is Mac. Raise your hand so the audience knows. This guy's got a super cart, and we're going to do a super cart show, uh, a super cart competition in South Bend this year. So he's into snowmobiles, and he's into super carts, and we're going to catch up with him there with the super cart. And he's going to take that brand new Yamaha VMAX uh, SX, that's that 700cc triple with the new suspension that they're doing. He's going to take a little water pass for us. Go ahead, Mac. Let's see what you can do with this thing. Girls, what do you think? Guys are good. This is open water out here. Look behind you. You see what's behind I you? I know. Is it? 
Well, it's deeper than you want to go in and when it's below zero. Oh, I know it. Oh, you believe going. he's going to run through that? No, I can't believe it. Well, watch this. Get what? Well, we're going to, we're better step back here a little bit. Over here, girls. Right over here. I mean, and folks, we don't what? want we don't want you guys to do this. We really don't want you to do this. Let's sort of take thing, just okay? a moment to what? acknowledge those really who helped create this update about today. snowmobiling and along the I and M well, canal. Rena Borowitz. So oh come on. Our webmaster you know Frank we'll Barbalace. So. Well, that's exactly well, right. Sue Cassanda. I've always got to try to keep the girls going a little Janine Lauschat. Is this guy going to make this? And me. I'm Patty Borowitz. It really is. Here we go. No, he's not getting wet. No. We are. We are. Oh, I know that. Okay. Yes, we okay. are. <laughs> Anyhow, cold or not, has everybody had at least some fun today? Yes, yes or no? Oh, yes. Everybody yes. had fun? Oh, yeah. Tell the folks for the last time. Don't, Don't go, go away, away folks. We'll, we'll be, be right back. back. Record setting cold and they still managed to have a good time. And speaking of time, we're out with only enough left to acknowledge the fine work of our award winning production team, including Chuck Itzenthaler, Randy R. Block. John Papke and Tom McGrady. Special thanks to JBTV's Jerry Bryant. Music is created for us by Fireside Recording Studio in Westchester, Illinois and by independent artists Roger Pauly and Jerry Herbert. Of course, we have to take a moment to thank the stars of this edition of Motorsports Unlimited. Don Caberlin, Samantha Bentley, Peggy O'Donnell, and our host, Bill Wilt. Me, I'm Tim Murtaugh, urging you to take advantage of winter motorsports. There's nothing like it. Thanks for watching. See you next this week. This program made possible in part by support from Jimmy's Red Hots, located on Grand Avenue and Pulaski Road in Chicago. This program made possible in part by support from the Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade, held on Western Avenue in Chicago, the first Sunday in December. This program made possible in part by support from ABC Auto Parts, located on Ashland Avenue at 138th Street in Blue Island, Illinois. Motorsports Unlimited is produced by Bill Wilt, president of the Motorsport Advancement Crusade. This program made possible in part by support from Bridgestone Firestone and your local Bridgestone Firestone tire retailers. This program made possible in part by support from Copy That, located in the County Farm Plaza at County Farm Road and Army Trail Road in Carroll Stream, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from PB Food Products, located on 47th Street at Western Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from J.C. Whitney & Company, located just off I-80 at the Utica exit in LaSalle, Illinois. Motorsports Unlimited was created to raise public consciousness, understanding, and appreciation of the motorsport community and their activities. You can contact us by email at msutv.com or you can write to Motorsport, P.O. Box 66242, Chicago, Illinois, 60666. We enjoy hearing from our audience. Please let us know what you think. Next week on Motorsports Unlimited, we're taking you back to the INM Canal for more snowmobile fun. It was the following year, just after a record snowfall, and we happened to have a new motorsport girl who was also new to this country. You'll enjoy Russian-born Luda Kay's first impressions of snowmobiling all next week on Motorsports Unlimited. So that's it, another edition of Motorsports Unlimited and the lovely ladies of motorsports. And be with us next week because we'll have something real exciting. Bill Wilt's going to have the lovely ladies and just about anything can happen right here on Motorsports Unlimited. Every week at this time, we bring you the best in motorsports. So I'll uh, be seeing you. Bye-bye. And uh, keep on rocking.